well, that's the problem. The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the Apple card. All of a sudden, we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. How did the universe come to be? The idea that the universe began with a Big Bang is firmly entrenched in the minds of billions of people. For years, the so-called science isn't nearly as settled as most people are led to believe. Many scientists know there are big problems with the idea, and the new images from the James Webb Space Telescope just deepened concern. NASA's $10 billion time machine has discovered six gigantic galaxies that emerged shortly after the cosmic dawn, stunning scientists by forming at a speed that upends the current understanding of the early universe. Even the renowned physicist Michio Kaku has broken his silence to discuss the James Webb Telescope's most breakthrough image in history. Is our understanding of the universe being transformed again? Stay tuned as we reveal the mysteries of these extraordinary galaxies and delve into the awe-inspiring revelations brought to light by the James Webb Telescope. But first and foremost, we need to understand what cosmologists know or think they know about the universe after the Big Bang. The infant universe began cooling off within a few million years. The roiling plasma that filled space settled down, and electrons, protons, and neutrons combined into atoms, mostly neutral hydrogen. Things were quiet and dark for a period of uncertain duration known as the cosmic dark ages. Then something happened. Most of the material that flew apart after the Big Bang is made of something we can't see, called dark matter. It has exerted a powerful influence over the cosmos, especially at first. In the standard picture, cold dark matter, a term that means invisible slow-moving particles, was flung about the cosmos indiscriminately. In some areas, its distribution was denser, and in these regions, it began collapsing into clumps. Visible matter, meaning atoms, clustered around the clumps of dark matter. As the atoms cooled off as well, they eventually condensed, and the first stars were born. These new sources of radiation recharged the neutral hydrogen that filled the universe during the so-called epoch of reionization. Through gravity, larger and more complex structures grew, building a vast cosmic web of galaxies. Meanwhile, everything kept flying apart. The astronomer Edwin Hubble figured out in the 1920s that the universe is expanding, and in the late 1990s, his namesake, the Hubble Space Telescope, found evidence that the expansion is accelerating. Think of the universe as a loaf of raisin bread. It starts as a mixture of flour, water, yeast, and raisins. When you combine these ingredients, the yeast begins respiring, and the loaf begins to rise. The raisins within it, stand-ins for galaxies, stretch further apart from one another as the loaf expands. The Hubble telescope saw that the loaf is rising ever faster. The raisins are flying apart at a rate that defies their gravitational attraction. This acceleration appears to be driven by the repulsive energy of space itself, so-called dark energy, which is represented by the Greek letter lambda. Plug values for lambda, called dark matter, and regular matter and radiation into the equations of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, and you get a model of how the universe evolves. This lambda cold dark matter, LCDM, model matches almost all observations of the cosmos. One way to test this picture is by looking at very distant galaxies, equivalent to looking back in time to the first few hundred million years after the tremendous clap that started it all. The cosmos was simpler than its evolution, easier to compare against predictions. Astronomers first tried to see the earliest structures of the universe using the Hubble telescope in 1995. Over 10 days, Hubble captured 342 exposures of an empty-looking patch of space in the Big Dipper. Astronomers were astonished by the abundance hiding in the inky dark. Hubble could see thousands of galaxies at different distances and stages of development, stretching back to much earlier times than anyone expected. Hubble would go on to find some exceedingly distant galaxies. In 2016, astronomers found its most distant one called Gigahertz 11, a faint smudge that they dated to 400 million years after the Big Bang. That was surprisingly early for a galaxy, but it did not cast doubt on the LCDM model, in part because the galaxy is tiny, with just 1% of the Milky Way's mass, and in part because it stood alone. But when the James Webb Space Telescope came along, 
our story of the universe is scrambling once again. NASA's $10 billion gamble, in full operation since last summer, has shown that galaxies formed much sooner after the Big Bang than scientists previously thought and that some of them are unexpectedly large, absolutely brimming with stars. The findings have thrown scientists into a new reality in which their existing theories no longer apply. Everyone in the astronomy community knew that the Webb telescope was going to be revolutionary, and we had a very clear list of things that we thought Webb would totally blow our socks off about, Joel Leha, an astronomer at Penn State University, said. But the discovery of the cosmically chunky galaxies where there shouldn't be any, this was nowhere on it. No one was looking for this. Instruments like Hubble and Webb are something like time machines. When the observatories look out into the depths, they're basking in starlight that left its source eons ago and has been traveling across the universe toward us ever since. In other words, to understand the cosmic beginning, astronomers must look for the most distant galaxies. Before Webb, scientists believed that those early distant galaxies emerged at a leisurely pace. The first stars formed when clouds of hydrogen gas collapsed in on themselves and ignited. Then, gravity drew the ancient orbs together into galaxies. All of this drawing together of disparate matter into massive cosmic neighborhoods was assumed to have taken at least one billion years. Sure, the most distant galaxy that Hubble ever spotted was unexpectedly bright for the cosmic conditions of the time, indicating a larger collection of stars than should have been possible. But astronomers didn't think too much of it then. They expected that Webb, with its ultra-powerful infrared vision, would uncover the starter galaxies that they anticipated and that Hubble couldn't see. Ha said the shiny new telescope, in Webb's first weeks, as astronomers raced to find the most distant galaxies ever detected, they wondered whether the data were actually wrong. The ancient galaxies were just too big and bright. A recalibration of Webb's instruments soon showed that some measurements were off, making some galaxies appear more distant than they actually were, and some claims were revised. But the big picture findings stuck. The early universe was somehow bold and brash and remarkably luminous. The objects we're finding are as massive or larger than the Milky Way, which is astounding, said Leha, who co published a paper last week that identified six enormous galaxies that existed just 500 million to 700 million years after the Big Bang. One of these galaxies may have amassed 100 billion times that of our Sun. Our own galaxy similarly contains many billions of stars, but it has had 13 billion years to reach its size. For a brief moment, this new reality seemed to threaten astronomers' fundamental understanding of the entire cosmos. If the starting point looked like that, could the standard model of cosmology, our strongest theory about the origins and composition of the universe, the one that didn't account for what Webb found, be wrong? But astronomers now believe that the theory can accommodate the new telescope's surprises. Recent computer simulations guided by the standard model have shown that the universe could indeed have created some of the galaxies that Webb has found. While on the face of it, the data don't seem consistent with cosmological models, I think what we're going to find is it's not cosmology that's the problem, but really what we understand about how galaxies formed, Leha has said. The possible explanations for how astronomers got it wrong are plentiful. Perhaps early stars formed far more efficiently than we thought, through mechanisms that scientists hadn't considered before. Alison Kirkpatrick, an astronomer at the University of Kansas who studies galaxy evolution, wonders whether cosmic dust in these galaxies could be playing tricks on Webb, making stars appear older than they really are. And maybe cosmic dust was just different back then. Evo Lab, an astronomer at Swinburne University of Technology, suspects that black holes could play a role. They are among the most luminous objects in the universe when they're feeding on cosmic matter, which glows as it gets sucked in. If you dump a lot of gas into a black hole, it will start to outshine the entire galaxy, Lab said. Such black holes could make early galaxies appear brighter, more star-filled. But none of these possibilities will undo the fact that the first island universes are not what we expected. Even accounting for some weird new phenomena, everything's too big and it's too big too soon, Kirkpatrick said. Investigating these questions will require more web observations, particularly the kind that yield more detailed measurements of starlight, known as spectroscopy. 
Astronomers need more to confirm that the most unusual galaxies they found are the real deal. And if they really are as old and big as they seem, understanding their composition will help astronomers suss out the conditions in which they formed. Researchers are in the thick of it now, with fresh spectroscopic data expected to come this spring. The effort verges on soul searching. Primordial starlight has never been so in demand, and astronomers and theorists, those who observe cosmic wonders and those who explain them, respectively, don't know exactly what they'll find once they're finished. It's probably going to be something like five years until we've totally settled into our new universe that we've gotten from JWST, Rensselaer, an astronomer at UC Santa Cruz and Stanford, said. In one sense, these new discoveries have injected drama, even anxiety, into a field that was quite stable. But in another sense, it's just fun, as Erica Nelson, an astronomer at the University of Colorado at Boulder, said. It's incredible how the universe is just so much weirder than we thought it was. It's the beginning of the universe. It's not going to affect my life, so it's really fun to think about this kind of stuff. After all, it is clear that when astronomers discuss what Webb has found so far, one word keeps coming up, shouldn't. Galaxies shouldn't be this way. The cosmic dawn shouldn't be that way. We find these shouldn't delightful. They hint at the well-intentioned hubris of humans, especially the most curious ones, those who wish to determine exactly how something works and why. But of course, the universe says, speaking to us by way of a giant telescope floating a million miles from Earth, this is how it is. This is apparently how it has always been. We're just discovering the wonder of it now. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.